hearts, God. And so we ask you, Lord, yes, to give them Lord. wisdom. Show them exactly what they need to do, how they need to do it, God. Yes. Bless all of our media people, God, yes, as they Lord. are connecting with the world, God, to broadcast your anointing and your message worldwide. So now, Lord, Absolutely. we ask you to bless, yes. Lord, all of those that are ministering worldwide to see this anointing go worldwide. And we thank you for it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And everybody Woo! says, Amen. Amen wow. and amen. I'm so glad to see you in the cold weather. My goodness. Yes, sir. Welcome. And all of you guys that are with us all across the world in our broadcast, we're glad to have you with us. I got my favorite chief of police in the whole wide world. Hello. Chief Mike Knapp's my buddy. Chief, hey, bud. open us up. Man, look, I just want to uh, invite everybody to know that, that next week, you know, we're having our uh, Thanksgiving dinner, so we want everybody to come and enjoy that. Uh, I'll be with you guys in spirit. I got some business up the road, but I will be with you in spirit. It'll be the first one I've missed, but uh, we look forward to serving you guys and, and everybody that hears us by voice. You know where we are. Come on down. We're going to uh, treat you to a very good evening of fellowship and food. Father God, we thank you so much. We thank you for the opportunity that you give us every day, Father, to serve you and to serve others through you, Lord. We are just so thankful. I, I just can't begin to tell you, Lord, how, how blessed I am for every breath you give me, Lord. I, I'm so blessed for the wisdom and for the guidance and for the training that you've put on my ears and on my tongue especially, Lord, to know when to say when, when to do when, yes. when not to do, when not yes. to say, and where to walk and where to talk and where not to, Lord. I just, I just can't thank you enough for what yes. you do. And I pray for my bishop here, Bishop Ricky Sinclair, my brother. Yes. Father God, just continue to lead God and direct him, Father, as he does your work here and as he does his work away from here, Father, in his personal life. Yes. I just pray blessing on him and Jeannie and Zach and the whole family, Lord, yes, and Sterling and Molly and the babies. And we just, we pray favor, Lord, because they need the strength. And, and it comes from you, Lord. And uh, especially on, on Monday, I'll be praying for my brother and, yes. and everybody be praying for him too. He's got a little minor deal going on, but uh, you know, everything's minor to us and it's less minor to the Lord. But in some of our family's eyes, it's major. So you keep them in your prayers and and keep this whole Miracle Place Church staff in your prayers. And Father, Pastor Chris, my friend, we, we, we're yes. beginning to know each other a little yep. bit better, Lord. Yep. And I'm just so thankful for him. Yep. And uh, for a guy 47 years old, I tell you what, he can still groove, man. He's, he's still got it. And y'all don't forget to pray for him and his bunch and his team here too. And Father, I'm going to close out now because if I take any more of his time, he's going to boot me out of here. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And all his people said, amen, amen, amen. and amen. Hey, let me just clarify. Monday, I want you to be praying for me. I'm doing a little outpatient surgery on uh, Monday. It's not a big deal. The, um, the doctor says, hey, it's, it's perfectly safe. But anytime you uh, get um, anesthesia and you uh, go under the knife, how I many of you know I just need your prayers? Would you just stretch forth your hands towards yes. me right oh, now? God. Father, I just thank you so yes. much for thank the saints, you. Lord, as we touch and agree, no yes. complications, no problems in that surgery on Monday, God. Lord, an outpatient, Lord, but God, anytime yes. we go under the knife, Lord, we ask you to direct yes. the surgeon's hands, God. And Lord, that there would be no complications in my body. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you for maintenance and upkeep in our bodies, God, so that we can be healthy and whole in order to fulfill the destiny and the purpose that you've given each one of us. So now, Lord, I pray good health and strength upon my body, yes, and I give you all the glory and all the honor and yes. all the praise for it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Woo! And everybody says, Amen and amen. Amen and amen. All right, Pastor Chris, are we ready to go to the high places tonight? All right, here we go. I feel rumbling down under my feet, powered away the dead. Come out.
out of their sleep I hear a rushing In the top of the tree So stand like a warrior And fall to your knees Come rule us, O oh Savior your staff and your rod will shatter this atmosphere the glory of God the hope for the nations the lion and lamb let all of heaven and earth be made new
What does it sound like when we sing heaven song? And what does it feel like when heaven comes down? What does it look like when God is all around? Let it come. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. such a price bought our redemption let heaven's gates swing wide we believe there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus
How many of you believe that tonight? Oh, I feel the glory of God in this place tonight. How many of you appreciate the Lord in this house tonight? Lord, we give you glory. We believe, Lord, that you're raising up an end time army, God, for these last days. And God, I thank you that you're equipping the saints. You're anointing them. You're appointing them, oh great God. You're fortifying them and filling them with your glory and with your power, oh great God. And we give you glory. We give you honor. How many of you believe that God is doing something supernatural in planet Earth right now? Let's get some of our leaders up here tonight. We want to pray for you. Any special requests that you have, just get out of your seat. Find one of our leaders and let them touch and agree with you tonight. I believe God's going to do something supernatural in your lives tonight. I feel breakthrough. I feel chains breaking right now in the name of Jesus.
saying rise up
Spirit in this place tonight. It's not an ordinary night. We surrender. We want to surrender to the Father tonight. Let's raise our hands. Come on, everybody, raise your hand. Surrender to Jesus. Father, we just repent of anything we might have thought or said or done, Lord. That might grieve you, Lord God. That might hinder you, Lord God. That might make a little one stumble, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord, if we've been complacent, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord, if we put something in front of you, someone in front of you. Forgive us, Lord, if our time was spent on meaningless things, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord. Because you made, created us, and we were made for love. The body of Christ suffered a tremendous loss this past week with the passing of Miles Monroe and his family. And we just send condolences and love to his people. You may be seated. His congregation, the family he left behind. We pray that his sons and daughters will rise up to fill the gap. I watched a video of Miles Monroe this week, and it was him talking about death. And he said, the richest place on earth is the graveyard. He said, because in that graveyard are books that have not yet been written, songs that haven't been sung, businesses that haven't been created. Just lost potential, that'll never be. It's just all stored in the ground. He said, when I die, I want to have given out everything that I could. I want to have been everything that God called and created me to be. I want to have written all the books I was supposed to write, touch all the people I was supposed to touch, preach the word with passion and fire. I want to be spent when I leave this world. Amen. And there's a poet, Dylan Thomas, that says, Do not go gentle into that good night. Do not go gentle in that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Father, like Pastor Chris was praying, man, we repent for any wasted time. We ask you, my Father, to forgive us, Lord. You have been so gracious to us. You have given us this life. You've given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. We have everything we need within our spirit to do what you have called and created us to do. There's no lust. There's no addiction. There's no nothing that can have any power over us. 
We are blood-bought children of God. We are filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, and there is nothing that we can't accomplish. Father, I pray over our minds, clarity of thought, Lord God. I pray over our spirits that they would be bold. I pray that we would know who we are without a shadow of a doubt. And that we would override any kind of foolishness, Lord God. You have given us, you have made a door of escape for us for any temptation that comes. We fear you, we respect you, we don't want to hurt you, Lord. Help us to choose that door always. Father, we submit to you tonight in the name of Jesus. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, Lord God. Let us burn for you. Let us fight against that final night, Lord God. Be everything that you have called and created us to be. In the name of Jesus, I stir up the gifts that are in this house. And under the sound of my voice, in the name of Jesus, you are somebody. And God has purpose for you. Don't lie to yourself. Don't let the enemy of your soul steal one more moment from you. Pick your head up and move forward. Freedom in your house. Freedom in your house. Do something great, God. Do something great, God. We yield. We submit. You are Lord. You are King, not me. Not me. God is free and relaxing just to let him take the reign, you know. I don't have to worry about this. I don't have to stress and fight. God, God's got this, amen? Just relax. You ain't got to try to be a Christian. You is a Christian, so just be what you already are. You don't have to front and stomp for nobody. God knows your heart. He knows right where you're at. He loves you so much right where you're at, but he'd never leave you there, amen? He's carrying us, all of us, along from faith to faith and glory to glory. Everything is going to be all right. I said everything is going to be all right. It is well with my soul. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap in this house tonight. If you really believe that, give him a hand clap of praise because he's worthy. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated again, man. I'm almost excited up here. Shoot. What? Just preparing for the weekend, my friends. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Has this been an amazing week? Yes. Everybody grateful they woke up this morning? Got one more shot at it? Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Lord willing, the creek don't rise. We'll get another shot tomorrow. Amen. Yeah. All right. We got any visitors in the house? If you would, just raise your hand up. Leave it up for me for a sec. Anywhere at all. Oh, okay. I knew you were in here somewhere. How you doing? Where are you from? Baton Rouge. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. We appreciate you being here. If you aren't connected somewhere else, we welcome you to come get with us. I see you have a collar, it looks. I can't see you from afar. It's all good. Great. Yes, Pastor Lacey, how are you doing? So wonderful. Well, wonderful. Great, great, great. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. If we don't have your email, put it on there. We send out a daily devotion, and we'll get you on our list. Amen? A little something just to bless you every day. Anybody else? Anybody? Okay, all right. Well, awesome. Pretty much home group tonight, huh? All right. Y'all ready to get down and get in the Word? (laughs) Y'all! All right. Well, we're going to take up our tithes and offerings in just a few minutes, but right now we'll go to NPC 77 News, see what's going on. Amen? Amen. Okay. Or not. There's nothing going on right now that you need to know about. Amen? (laughs) 
We're having service Sunday. Make sure you make it. Amen. <laughs> are we eating next week or yes. is it next week? We All right. I heard Chief is like buying a load of chicken. Like he just 150 pieces of chicken. Man, you can't eat all the chicken we can buy. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> we will hook you up with a leg so quick it'll make your head swim. Ask me if I'm lying. <laughs> y'all make sure y'all be here on Thursday, amen? We always have a good time. We have a great crowd that shows up, plenty of food. We're just preparing for the season, amen? All right. Well, let's look at our scripture. What's that? 6.30, same as normal church, just show up here like you were coming to church. We'll have all of this to be set up with tables. We'll have a big old long line back there full of food. If you know somebody hungry, bring them. It's a great night. We're just going to love on them. I guess probably Pastor Chris usually sings a little bit. He uh, serenades us while we eat, and then he gets a little chicken leg, and then he gets back up there and all that groovy stuff. <laughs> uh, we're in Psalm 34 tonight. If y'all can see the screen, can you see the screen? Yeah. Why don't you read it with me? It says, I will bless the Lord at his praise be in my mouth. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. For there is no want to them that fear or respect the Lord. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall what? Shall not want any good thing. Amen? Father, we just come to you tonight and we just totally respect and honor you. Father, we know that if we'll abide under the shadow of your wing, Lord, we'll not want for any good thing, Lord God. You will make provision for everything. And if we don't have it, it's because you have not seen that we need it. And we totally trust that. We love you. We praise you. Father, whether we are down here or up here, Lord, we're like the Apostle Paul. We are content. And we know that we will never go anywhere until we are content and we have a great grateful spirit. Help us to have those two elements, Lord Jesus, to always be content, to always be grateful. There's always some blessing that we can thank you for. Thank you. You are amazing, and we give you all the glory. Lord, I pray your blessing of your people as they honor you tonight through their giving. I ask, Father, that you would meet every need that they have, that you would continue to strengthen and encourage them and just draw them unto yourself. Be real to your people, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on from all over this place and so into the kingdom of the living God. guys i just speak the blessing of god over you thanks so much for being with us in our service here in baker louisiana we love each and every one of you hey listen if you've never been to one of our services here in louisiana we sure if you're out of the state out of the country we invite you to be part of our services we love you guys and we bless you father i thank you so much for all of our people god worldwide God I'm asking you to supernaturally meet every need that they have I'm asking you to supernaturally move in every area of their life father I'm asking you to supernaturally touch your people God with your presence I release your glory I release your anointing I release your power God into every household that's with us in this service today God we bless them now father in the name of Jesus hey don't go away we're gonna be in John chapter 8 tonight we're gonna blow this place up for Jesus. Don't go away. All right, are you ready to get into the Word of God tonight? Give the Lord another great big shout in this place. John chapter 8, tonight, if you got your Bibles, go ahead and get them out. We're going to uh, preach Jesus. Would that be all right if we just preach the glory of Jesus tonight? 
We're going to start in verse 9 tonight. How many of you remember the story uh, with the woman that was caught in adultery? Or at least she was accused of adultery. Are y'all out there? Because it was really a setup where they were just simply trying to set Jesus up to bring some kind of accusation ultimately to try him and ultimately crucify him. I wonder if anybody you ever had any haters in your life. <laughs> wonder if you ever had any accusation against you in your life. <laughs> Oh, I'm in the right place. <laughs> Guys, can I just encourage you? Man. Water off a duck's back. Quack, quack, baby. You just got to keep moving forward in your life. You got to do what God called you to do. You can't worry about what people say or what they think because they're going to do it anyhow. Keep your heart clean. Keep your heart pure. Make sure you stay focused on the mission that God has given you. And you just simply keep going forward. Can I get an amen? Um, and I'm just telling you, your haters will help promote you. <laughs> Those that come against you will give you a little stemma. Come on now. They'll give you some backbone and make you something great. So here we are. We're in uh, verse 9 with John chapter 8. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience. So how were they convicted? You know, conscience can be good, and conscience can be bad. Sometimes conscience, if you don't understand the power of the blood of Jesus, and the grace and mercy of God, sometimes conscience can become an enemy in your life. It's amazing that these that have condemned this woman in adultery, and now they're standing before Jesus and they say, Jesus, this woman was caught in adultery and the law of Moses says to do what? To stone her. What do you say? What do you say? Grace and mercy? Okay, I agree with that. Um, and, and so Jesus, uh, Jesus said, all right, and he knelt down and he was writing something on the ground. He, he wrote something because when he, when he wrote whatever he wrote, their conscience started getting a hold of them. Oh, he was giving time to think. <laughs> yeah, Sally. Oh, no. <laughs> Susan. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, all right. Friend Joe. I don't, all right. I don't know, when nobody knows what he wrote, but whatever he wrote, it had an effect on him. Come on now. And then once he wrote it and they saw it and their conscience were dealing with them, Jesus said, all right, you who are without sin, you be the first one to what? Cast the stone. And the, and the Bible says they started dropping rocks. Are y'all out there? I um, was amazed. I saw Angie Dory and... Uh, I got ready to get in her vehicle. We were uh, traveling and ministering in some um, institutions. And when I looked down on the floor, she had a rock uh, uh, with her name written on it. And um, I asked her, I said, what's that rock? She says, you remember when you preached, dropped the rock, and you gave everybody in the church a rock? That's the rock you gave me. So <laughs> she says, every time I get ready to condemn somebody or to judge them, or look down on them, I look at that rock, and I see my name on that rock, and it helps me remember, drop the rock. Come on now. I said, drop. Drop the rock. Watch out now. If I feel a preach, come on now. I start acting crazy. <laughs> so they were convicted by their own conscience, and they went out. How many? They went out one by one. Um, beginning at the eldest and even unto the, the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman was standing there in the midst. And I love what Jesus tells her. And when Jesus lifted up himself and he saw none but the woman, he said unto the woman, he says, Where are those that are, are your accusers? Has no man condemned you? And she said, No, sir. Uh, no, sir, Lord, how many of you know that was a good thing to call Jesus? How many of you know that when you call him Lord, you become his? 
And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn you. Girl, stop sinning. Go and sin no more. How many of you appreciate Jesus? How many of you think you want to fall into his hands rather than a man's hands? How many, how many, how many, how many, how many of you think that Jesus would be a better judge? All right. Y'all know already we said if, if, if he's your Lord and Savior and your judge. Touchdown. All right, I touched. How many of you know you got favor with the man? Shoot. And then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, of course, he's talking to the Jews. He says, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, You bear record of yourself, and your record is not true, because you just talking out of your own head. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true, for I know where I came from. Y'all, how many of you know you got to know where you came from, where you're going? And I know where I go, but you cannot tell where I came from, neither can you tell where I'm going to go. Because you are of this world. You judge after the flesh. I mean, you know the Bible says that not, let no flesh glory in his presence. And the Bible says that the anger, the wrath of man work of not the righteousness of God. How many of you know that when you are of the flesh, you're not in the spirit of the living God? Come on now, we're walking in the spirit and not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. He says, I judge no man. And yet, if I do judge, my judgment is still true, for I am not alone. But I am my Father that sent me. Come on now, how many of you know the two have become one? It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bears witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bears witness of me as well. Somebody said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what are you saying? The Bible said that no man could do the miracles that Jesus did. Come on now. It was God in him testifying that Jesus Christ was the Messiah, the Savior of the world. That's why the blind were being healed. Deaf ears uh, could hear. The lepers were being cleansed. The dead were being raised from, from, from the dead. Because the power of God was upon Jesus. And this was a testimony that Jesus is who he says he is. Shout somebody. By the way, Jesus is God. He says, I can, do nothing, uh, I can do nothing of my own. I only do that which I hear my Father say, and I only do that which I see my Father do. I didn't come of my own. I came because the Father has sent me. And later on in the Scripture, he says, I and my Father are one, and I pray that you'll be one in us. I in you, you in me, and we in you. And all of us is one. Yes. I'm talking about Christianity now. Christianity is intimacy. That's why it's never about the law. That's what Jesus is trying to teach them. And I've got plenty of time. I'm going to tear this place up tonight. That's what Jesus was trying to say. He said, Lesker, man, you're about the law. You're about throwing rocks at folks. You totally missed the whole vision of the purpose of God. God's purpose is to have intimacy. God's purpose is to know you. And you walk as one with God. Listen, if you knew my father, you would know me. What in the world are you doing trying to kill me? Have you lost your mind? If you really did know the father, don't tell me your daddy's Abraham. I don't want to. Some kind of way you get some kind of special privilege. Or because your, your father, you say, is Abraham. Or you have a sense of self-entitlement. Like, you should get some kind of special privilege, flesh child. <laughs> yeah. This is the thing. They relied heavily on covenant. You know what I'm saying? And, and the rules and, and everything of that pertaining 
to covenant, you know, because they had, of course, the circumcision and, you know, the few little rules that God gave them and then the 300 that they added to it themselves that nobody else could live up under, you know. But they relied on those things for their salvation. That's why it's very important that we don't fall into religiosity and behavior modification. If you're just trying to act right or if you're just trying to do God a favor by going to church or doing this and that, we're, we're not doing our job. If we don't lead you to intimacy with God and relationship with God, then we are failing you because it's not about making sure you look good on the outside and you doing the right things and you smell right. It's about a heart transformation. And that can only come through supernatural salvation through Christ and a growing intimacy with God and getting into his word and finding out who he is and what he is all about. We cannot rely on the fact that we Baptist, Pentecostal, Catholic, you know, as soon as I am, I meet somebody and they, and I, and we're talking, if we get off on, on faith or something, they, and they say, introduce themselves as, as a this, this denomination or that denomination, I know immediately where you at. Your confidence is in your denomination. You know, God does not have grandchildren. God has sons and daughters. You must know him for yourself. You can't ride on nobody's coattail, and you can't ride on your church either. You got to get it for yourself. And that's the same thing with the Jews, the Pharisees, all those religious people. Jesus came to bust that bubble. He's like, if, if Abraham was your father, you would recognize me because I'm of the same spirit. I'm the one that he's been looking for to come to set people free, and you don't get it. It's because you don't know God. You're out here burning fires and flicking coins in the pot and, you know, acting like you all that big old scripture things on your head. It's not about how much scripture you got up here. It's about how much you walking in and here. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. All right. <laughs> Mama has spoken in the name of Jesus. All right. <laughs> then said they unto him, where is your father then? And Jesus answered. He says, you don't know me, nor do you know my father. Because if you would have known me, you should have already known my father also. How many of you know, Jesus said many times, even to his disciples, he says, man, he says, if I've been with you so long and you say still show me the father, disciples, do you not know if you've seen me, you've seen the Father already? You know what Jesus was trying to say? I and my Father are one. That's why I can only do what he says to do. Because when that's who you are, it's all you can do. Come on now, you is who you is. These words, are y'all out? <laughs> all right. <laughs> These words spoke Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the the church, the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, your hour has not yet come. All right. By the way, that's good news. Yeah, that's great news. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and you shall seek me, and you shall die in your sins. Because where I go... You cannot come. <laughs> How many of you know that it don't matter if Abraham's your father or not? You better know Jesus. Come on now. Then said the Jews, man, is he going to commit suicide? Will he kill himself? Because he said, oh, whither I go, you cannot come. And he said unto them, you are from beneath. I mean, you know where hell is. All right. And, and I am from a above. You are of this world, and I'm of, I'm not of this world. In other words, we have set our affection on those things which are above and not on these things which are beneath. Are y'all out here tonight? So, so we are spiritually minded. We're heavenly minded. In fact, we are citizens of heaven. Really, we're ambassadors on earth representing a foreign land. We're representing heaven in a place called earth. We're just passing through, pilgrims. This ain't our home. 
The world didn't give it to us. And the world can't take it from us. No, 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 no. <laughs> can't touch that. All right, so uh, I said, therefore, unto you that you shall die in your. Y'all <laughs> got kind of quiet in here. So I'm talking about that dying business. Y'all ain't shouting in this house. That you shall die in your sins if you believe not that I am He. You shall die in your sins. How in the world are you going to go to heaven? God help us. When I believe in Jesus Christ, I receive eternal life. Because He is the resurrection and the life. So in Christ, I get life and I get resurrection. And so the life is in Jesus who is God. And it comes from a relationship and a friendship in intimacy with Him. It's not about you, it's about... That's what Jesus is trying to say, man. Look, Jews... You've been uh, hanging out in the synagogues. You've been writing these scriptures. Oh, you've been praying loud prayers in front of everybody in the corner. You've been making a big show. When you go to an offering, you pour a big bucket of change in the offering plate so everybody can hear how much you're putting in. And you call yourself saved. But Jesus said, I tell you, if you do not believe that I am He... If you don't know me, if you don't know my father, if you don't have a friendship and a relationship with God, it ain't about your law. It ain't about you throwing your rocks. It ain't about your judgmental, dogmatic attitudes. It ain't about how much you think you know or how much better you are than others. It, it ain't about this world. In fact, you are from beneath. I'm from above. Your mind is in the world. You live in the world. The world is your God. You worship the world. <sighs> Jesus, I told you I was going to cut loose now. Man, guys, Christianity... It's not about rules and regulations. It's about God. It's about connecting to Him. Now, when you connect to Him, He's going to give you a desire to keep some rules and regulations. He's going to put it in your heart. But it's going to be God doing... It's going to be His grace. It's going to be His mercy. It's going to be His power. It's going to be God doing it in you. You become one with Him. It's all about knowing Him and walking with Him and Him living through you. And as He lives through you, then you'll see the glory of God. It'll be the power of God. It won't be you in the world. It'll have nothing to do with you in this world. It'll have you to do with Him. Not of this world but, but of a, a citizen of heaven, setting your affection on God, on those things which are above, and not on these things which are beneath. you got to wear this world like a barbed wire girdle. <laughs> How many of you want to put that, one, uh, that little girdle on? Let's make it razor wire, bob wire. All right, so then said, that. guys, listen, that's what Jesus is saying. And finally, Jesus is going to seal the deal by saying there's two fathers. One's the devil. And one's the good father. Like the, like the, the prodigal son's father, the one that's like, listen, guys, God is our friend. Man, look, if God wouldn't be, be my friend, I wouldn't be here. God loves us. God seeks to rescue us. God seeks to help us. God is for us, not against us. If God be for us, who could be against us? 
So what am I saying? I'm saying that the devil's trying to destroy you and God's trying to save you. The enemy is not God. That's why I loved what the scripture said that when they were condemning the woman to death for, for adultery. By the way, where was the man? Did, are you saying that she committed adultery by herself? Uh, <laughs> I got a little comment over and said that they were the men. Oh, so they set her up. I don't know what happened. All I know is, is if she's guilty, he's guilty. You know, because it takes like two to do adultery. Last time I checked the definition. So, so the thing is, 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 is man, all right, here's the woman, but where is he at? Listen, I'm going to be preaching on the woman's world. And I got some ideas about this this Sunday. I'm starting a series called The Woman's World. God help me. Men, pray for me. I need help. Jesus. I did six weeks on, on, on men. I'd probably be able to barely make it through the first service on women. But, but I got some good ideas. You know, femininity is the power to be. Masculinity uh, is the power to do. God is both. So man and woman married actually is a picture of the glory of God. Woman teaches us touch and compassion, nurture, which releases an impartation in us. Could it be that the, that the devil has tried to discredit the women? To hinder the glory of femininity, the power of touch, the power of compassion, the power of love from being manifested in the human race so that we would be warped? All right, just something to think about. I don't even, I, I'm going to preach that Sunday. Then said, are y'all... It's going to be good, I'm telling you. I, I think I got something for you guys. I, I think I'm going to help you. I, I whooped up on the men, so I'm going to... I got something for you ladies. Then said they unto him, Who in the world are you, Jesus? Who are thou? By what authority do you have? Who gave you your authority? i never forget the Mormons knocked on my door and asked me that one day. I just threw it back on. I said, by what authority do you have? So, and Jesus said unto them, even, <laughs> you know, when they start getting scared, they start asking, who, 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 how, how do you have your authority? Uh, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. And Jesus says, I have many things to say to you and to judge of you. But he that sent me, God the Father, is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. In fact, that's the only thing I can say. They understand not that he spoke to them of God the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When you shall lift up the Son of Man, what is that? Being crucified? Then shall you know that I am he. And that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. I mean, no, God will never leave you nor forsake you. For I do always those things that please him. And he spoke these words, and many believed on him. I mean, you know, many people became followers of Jesus. And now here comes the Jews. And then said Jesus to the Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then indeed are you my disciples. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall, shall set you free, shall make you free. Why will truth uh, set you free? Can I tell you the only way that you can be deceived is if you believe a lie? The only power the devil has is deception, which is lies. Because immediately when I know the truth, 
I can't be deceived. The enemy has no more authority or power in my life. So that's why and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they answered unto him, We know the truth. We be Abraham's seed, and we have never been in bondage to any man. How do you say that, that you shall be made free? Are you insinuating that we're all in bondage when we're Abraham's seed? Um, can you tell them, Brother Collins, to be quiet back there? Then answered uh, them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is what? If I commit sin, I'm a servant of sin. Are y'all, look, everybody stand up. Stand up. Everybody stand up. Give your neighbor a high five right now. I love y'all. Give your neighbor a high five. Give somebody a hug. I love y'all. All right. That's good. Y'all can hang out there. Give me a hug. All right. Thank you, Lord. I want you to move a little bit. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> all right. Y- y'all got about another 10 or 15 minutes of me. All right. I love y'all. Jesus, if you're watching us at home or wherever you're at, just hug somebody. Love somebody. <laughs> Jesus. All right. all right. Is everybody alive? All right. Give the Lord a wave offering. All right. There you go. Just a wave offering. All right. Now you can be seated. Thank you so much. And Shoot, guys. I don't want, I don't want to get boring on us. All right, it, it, maybe it's been a long week, huh? So he says this, he says, And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abides forever. How many in Jesus' house? I mean, you know, forever is good news for us, okay? So we're on, we're on Jesus' side. And then he says this, and, and it, this is going to get a little exciting in here. If the son therefore shall what? Make you free, you shall be what? Free indeed. So, how many of you can say Jesus has made you free and free indeed? All right, all right. So, I know that you are Abraham's seed. That's what Jesus says. But the problem is, is, is that you seek to kill me. And the problem with that is, is I'm the life giver. So that if you don't believe that I am He, the life giver, then you will die in your sin because I am the life. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes from the Father except through me. So you keep saying that you're Abraham's seed in some kind of way. A self-entitlement says that you're saved because of your, your, because of your lineage, your, her- your heritage. But Jesus is saying, I'm telling you now, it ain't about tradition or religion. It ain't about the church that you go to. And Jeannie already has talked about that tonight. But it's about a friendship or a relationship. It's about knowing me. And that's what Jesus is talking about. He says, I speak that which I've seen of my father. And you do that which you have seen of your father. I mean, you know, he's fixed to put the kahij on him. I mean, you know what the kahij is. Yep, that's what it is. And they answered and they said unto him, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said unto them, If you were really Abraham's children, you would act like Abraham. You would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me. Have you lost your mind? A man that has told you the truth, which the truth shall make you free, which I have heard of the Father, because I only speak that which I hear him say. This did not Abraham. In other words, Abraham heard the voice of God, and he did the voice of God. So even Abraham obeyed God the Father's voice. You do the deeds of your father... Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. Probably some of you. Probably some of of you. All right. We have but one father, even God. And Jesus said unto them, how many of you know Jesus is under the gun? How many real allies did Jesus have? 
He fought the whole doggone nation, man. You talking about a, a man amongst men. Come on now. Man, can you imagine the warfare Jesus Christ went through? We go through our little battles and start squirming and squealing and all that, man. What did Jesus, what kind of warfare, the Savior of the world? He said this. Uh, he says, if God were your father, you would really love me. You'd have a relationship with me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. I didn't come of myself. But God has sent me to save you crazy people. Maybe. Why do you not understand then my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. And then he says this. He says, if you really want to know who your father is, ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abide not in the truth because the truth is not in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own because he's the father of all lies. If you really want to know the guy that you have a relationship with, want to know who your daddy is, I hate to hurt your little feelings today. Guys, how I many you know we got to know the Lord, huh? Jesus is Lord and Savior of our life. God is our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed. We worship your name. We give you glory and honor. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will come. Be done on earth as it is in heaven. So how did Jesus teach us to pray? Jesus taught us to pray that first of all, we have a relationship with God the Father because we call Him our Father. And then He taught us that we should pray His kingdom. In other words, we should pr proclaim His kingdom. I, I remember Miss Ginger this morning, I was in their class, and they asked me, they've been studying the authority of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God, and they, they said, what do you think, uh, brother, you're running through here? Just give us a little thought on that. I said, it's all about kingdom. It's all about releasing the kingdom of God. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Everywhere I go, I release His kingdom because I'm a child of the living God. God the Father is my Father. I represent Jesus Christ in a place called planet earth. And everywhere I go, wherever my foot treadeth, He gives me the land. I take authority by the dominion that He gave me from the book of Genesis. We lost it in Genesis through Adam and in Jesus we gain it now. I got it back and when I step my foot down I release authority I release kingdom because King Jesus is king of his kingdom and I represent my king King Jesus y'all feel it you can feel it because there's authority and power in the body of Christ. It's because of a relationship with God. It's because I'm connected to Him and I'm one of His. Just like you're connected to Him. And listen, in the world you'll have tribulation, man, but be of good cheer. He has overcome the world and you'll overcome the world. You'll go through some things in life. Just chalk it up, baby. You're going to walk through some things in life. But listen... You better give your life for something that you can die for, that you believe in. Or oh, what will you be? Who will you be? Have you not true to your own heart? What in the world will you do? You've got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. You've got to believe in something. You've got to have something to give your life to. Or what will you do? I made a decision years ago that I would represent, babe, represent Jesus. And I would be a kingdom builder.
Because I believe that that's God, the master, sustainer, the creator of the universe. It's God's will to release his authority in planet earth. And he's looking for a few good men and women to do that. I wonder if I can recruit you for the kingdom tonight. Will you give your life to stand for the glory of God? Will you go after God with all your heart? Will you live for God? I didn't ask you to be perfect. I asked you just for your heart. We get a hold of your heart, babe, you'll get some things right. It'll come from your heart. I ain't going to preach a big bunch of do's and don'ts. I'm going to preach intimacy with Jesus Christ. You get intimacy with Jesus Christ, you'll get the do's and don'ts. I'm never going to preach a performance gospel. Because the Bible says that a relationship with God through Christ Jesus is intimacy. And there's your power. There's the glory of God. That's what Jesus is preaching to the Gentiles. I mean to the Jews to, uh, tonight. He says, hey listen man. The problem is, is that you say that some kind of way you have some kind of um, special rights and privileges. But the thing is, is I'm him. And if you don't believe in me, then you're going to die in your sin. You don't have a relationship with God. It ain't about all this stuff of the world. He says, I'm not of the world. You are. I mean, you know, you got to give the world up. Yeah. Got to stop living for you. Jesus said, look, here's the thing. He says, if any man desire to come after me, let him deny himself and pick up his cross daily and follow me. Yes, if a man doesn't hate his mother, his father, uh, uh, his uh, children, his wife, and even income, even uh, riches, he's not fit for my kingdom. If a man shall set his hand to the plow of Jesus Christ in some kind of way, look back. He's not fit for the kingdom of God. Listen. You give your heart to God and go after Jesus with all your heart and all the other stuff will fall in place. You got to love God more than you love your wife. You got to love God more than you love your daddy, your mama. One guy said, hey, Jesus, hang on. Let me go to the, let me go to the funeral with my, my dad and I'll come and follow you. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead, baby. You, you stay focused on me. All right, I, Hey, the, the guy's dad was not actually dead. He was wanting to go and wait until he did pass before he came, you know. I just wanted to clarify that. God's not uncompassionate. You want some water? Yeah, I need some water. Okay, well, that was the only point I had to make. <laughs> I, didn't want, I didn't want everybody to think God was cruel or something, you know. It wouldn't want you to, uh, you know, go to your parents' funeral or something. It, the guy's dad was not dead yet, you know. It, all those were just excuses that the people gave within that, that chapter. Thanks for cleaning it up, babe. you got to serve God with all your heart. You better give God glory in this place. You better love God more than your daddy. You better love God more than your mama. You better love God more than your children. You better love God more than your possessions, more than your job. you got to love God more than anything. If you'll put God first, all them other things will automatically take care of themselves. you got to love God. Jesus. Now y'all got the fire. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now. See, we got nine minutes to go, babe. And because I tell you the truth, you don't believe me. Which of you convinces me of sin? If I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God hears God's words. You therefore hear them not because you don't know God. You know what he was saying? He says, man, when you have a relationship with God, it's going to come natural. You'll automatically hear God's voice. You'll automatically want to do what's right. But the problem is, is, is you are of this world. You're from beneath. You're in the flesh. 
And as a result, you don't have a relationship with God. And because you don't have a relationship with God, you're trying to serve God in the flesh and you can't do it. You can't even hear His voice in the flesh. Man, I'm telling you what, Jesus Christ was serious business. He didn't mix His words. He told them straight up it was Him against all of them. And let me tell you something, they were mad. I'm talking about trying to set him up with, with a girl in adultery. They kept sending uh, attorneys to try to trick him up in his words. Uh, well, he did. He, sent, he, he did send um, attorneys to try to, try, and I'm sure they bought the best there was too. And guess what? When you go up against the Word of God, I don't care how many letters you got in front of your name, Mr. Attorney. You go up against the word of God. And I love what he said in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. He says concerning Jesus, thousands of years prophesying about Jesus and who he would be and how he would come. He said unto us a child is born. Unto us a, a son is given. And upon his shoulders shall be the government of God. I mean, you want to be under God's government. And here's this government. Here's the rules. He shall be called. Here's the government. Wonderful. Counselor. Money God. Everlasting Father. And Prince of Peace. Who wants to be under that government? Shout somebody. Jesus. So who is Jesus? He's God. He's wonderful. He's our counselor. He's our everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. Come on, give God glory in his place. Jesus Christ is God. That's why, he's, that's why he kept telling them, man. Look, man, you saying you want to go to heaven. Here I am, babe. Let's go. No, no, no. We're the seed of Abraham. I love what he said in a minute ago. He says, before Abraham was. And we'll, we'll get to it. Then answered the Jews, and they said unto him, Say we not well that you are a Samaritan and you have a devil? Jesus, you are possessed with a demon, and not only that, you are happy, you are a Samaritan. Anybody ever call your names and tell you full of the devil and you're crazy? Don't worry, Jesus understands. <laughs> this week or last week. <laughs> How about when you tell Jesus you are possessed? Not only that, you're one of them low class. You are Samaritan. <laughs> are y'all? <laughs> and Jesus answered. He says, I have not a devil. I'm going to teach you something right here. But I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. Can I tell you right now, when you honor what God honors, God blesses you. When you dishonor what God honors, you cause a curse to come in your life. You don't ever dishonor an office or a position that God has established. Because when you dishonor what God honors, shazam! Judge not that you be not in the seed that you plant, baby. You will surely get a harvest. You can plant tares or wheat seed. It's your choice. All right, I'm going to move. And I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and does judge. By the way, y'all have crossed the line. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see how many of you want to follow Jesus? How many of you never want to die? Jesus, Jesus, glad I'm saved. I got a hold of this in jail. Then said the Jews, and <laughs> I'll never forget the sheriff came by. I was beaming, man. I done got saved in his little lockdown cell. I told him, I said, man, I'm called to preach the gospel. I thought he was going to pass out right there. <laughs> He said, oh, Ricky Sinclair, another trick. 
another thing. <laughs> he quickly got away from the cell. He was looking through the little window. Come on now. He, he could do whatever he wanted. Listen, Jesus came to prison with me. Jesus hung. Touchdown. How about Jesus that will hang out with you anywhere you go? Jesus ain't scared of no penitentiary, baby. Jesus said, let's go. Let's hang out. Jesus ain't scared of no kind of crazy house. They got all kinds of houses out there. I don't even want to get into them. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that you are possessed, Jesus. Abraham is dead and the prophets. And you said that if a man keep your sayings, he shall never taste of death. We come and do an end. Are you saying you're greater than our father Abraham? Are you Jesus, which is dead? And the prophets that are dead? Who in the world do you think you are? And Jesus said, if I honor myself, I honor nothing. But guess what, kiddo? It is my father that honors me. And of whom you say that he is your God. But I'm telling you, you don't know him. Yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say I know him not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I do listen. I keep his sayings. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and he was glad. This blew him away. And then they said, the Jews unto him, You ain't even 50, Jesus. How you saw Abraham been dead for thousands of years. You Look what Jesus says. Before Abraham was, big boy, I am. I'm going to give you three things that, uh, in, in how uh, Abraham rejoiced to see Jesus' day. You want to hear that? You remember in the 12th chapter when Abraham got a vision from God that through his seed shall all the families be blessed? That his seed would be like the sand, couldn't be numbered. His seed would be like dust. His seed would be like the stars in the sky that couldn't be numbered. And that through him would all the families of the earth be blessed. How many of you know that that lineage would be Jesus Christ that would be born through his seed? Are y'all out there? So that's one way that Abraham rejoiced. Um, the next way, you got it? Come on, girl, I need to hear it. I'm sure Jesus was there when Abraham came on home. <laughs> yeah. He was there. And, you know, I wasn't thinking about that, but that's the fourth way. Um, the next thing is, is that um, you remember when Jesus showed up at Abraham's tent and Abraham and Sarah both laughed? I mean, you know, that was the second person of the Godhead. That was Jesus. Abraham rejoiced to see Jesus' day. Are y'all out there? So um, when, Jesus, when, when Jesus told them that Abraham rejoiced to see his day, before Abraham was, I am. They, they knew immediately that, that, well, who should it most say, well, who, who, who am I going to tell them to send me? Who, who, who? They'll never believe me. And Jesus in the bush, the fire. He said, Moses, oh Mo, you just tell them that I am sent you. Whatever you need, baby. I am whatever you need in your life. Come on now. If you need some more frogs, I am. If you need some more lice, I don't even want to get in. Come on now. I am. If you need the enemy to lose their firstborn and all y'alls are still alive, I am. How many appreciate the Lord tonight? Come on, stand to your feet tonight. Let's get out of here. Um, what do we got, Julia? Real quick, quick, quick. What's going on up here? Quick, quick, quick. Uh, John chapter 8, what's the summary? 
really that um, Jesus and God are one, and um, Jesus didn't do anything or say anything. Um, he only did what God taught him, what his father had taught him. And God, and that's exactly how God wants it to be. Um, God wants us um, to honor and see God and um, in Jesus in all of his glory. And it comes down to this all about Jesus. If we don't believe in Jesus, then we don't have salvation. We don't have anything. Um, and so you can really sum everything up that it's all about Jesus. And the Jews really miss that because they were trying to keep the law. And every time they tried to trick him or anything, God always um, bailed Jesus out, gave him the wisdom and the knowledge, um, you know, where he could, they couldn't trap him or anything um, because Jesus is God. And we can't come, I don't want to come against that. Um, and they decided to, and that was dumb too. Um, and because Jesus is everything, he's the only thing that is worth investing and giving your whole in, your whole life for because he's the only thing worth dying for and living for and you find your purpose and everything through him and keep seeking him and go after him with everything that you got because at the end of the day everything else just flows after that you have to seek the kingdom of god and um jesus is all that matters i want to ask you a little question right now is that good how old are you if you don't mind me asking I'm 26. 26. And you love God with all your heart? I love him with everything. Is that good enough, guys? How about, how about a youngster that loves God with all their heart? Let's pray out loud. Say, Lord, we believe that you are king of your kingdom. We believe that we are part of your kingdom everywhere we go. We will decree, we will proclaim, we will release your kingdom in the name of Jesus. King Jesus, you are Lord of my life. And I choose to follow you with all my heart. Hey, if you believe that, give the Lord a great big hand clap. Hey, thanks so much for all of you guys being here tonight. We love you. We bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Have a great night. Stay warm. It's cool out there. Make sure you put your seatbelt on as you go home tonight. We love you guys.